Hello guys, here we are in a system where we are reporting the passengers manually into an Excel file where we have the passenger's name, the address, the health office, the phone number, the nationality of the country, of the person, the country the person is arriving from, the diseases and the surveillance for that particular country and the flight numbers. Here this is done manually in a way like this, you have to input passengers. It is in the surveillance, the phone number, and the country in the surveillance. And the flight person is coming from. This is quite tedious and we have to do that for 3,000 passengers around daily. So we are setting up a system on Excel using VBA, Visual Basic for Application, where we'll be doing that the most automatically possible. So we'll be putting the flight number here, the name and surname, we are going to split that into two, the nationality, the hotel, the person is coming from, the person caring for that person coming from abroad, the locality, the address, the number and the address street, the health office, the phone number. And we have some basic options if the person is a crew member we transiting, the country arriving from, and the disease and the surveillance, any onset of diseases, and we have some details if the person is suffering from any of these. If the person is resident, non resident, and expatriate. So we are setting up this form on Excel. So first of all, we are going to activate the developer tab where we are going. We are having the Visual Basic for application. And this, you go to the main tabs here. You can have the all tabs. And if it's not enabled in the first installation of Excel, you have to enable that here. Otherwise, you won't get access to the Visual Basic for application. And in the tab here for the developers, you have the Visual Basic for application. And this is what we are getting here. And that's how we are going to create a form normally. You start up with a blank, you insert a user form, and you will have a blank form here where we have the abilities to enter anything like the label here, the text box, a combo box. We have a some checkbox here. You have a, an option button, a rectangle button. These are the buttons that we have been using here. And we have the frame button here. And of course you have the yes, command button here. And this one too we have been using. These are some other controls here that are not been using for the time being in this tutorial here. So as we're going to see that here we have the properties. This is the property window here that is going to help us change the properties for this one. We can have the caption, the name we want to appear here. Serial okay, to appear here. And we have the name by which we are going to refer to this label and it's a good convention to always start the name with the name of the control here because we're going to put label serial for instance and for the same principle we are going to apply for this text box uh, let's say first name and same for combo box uh, address for the list box again list box box for the, for the check box for the options for example residence double button For example, and we use 
use the frame normally to encapsulate many commands so things that we want to keep together we can put for example some buttons here inside the frame so that when we select the frame it's selecting all of these together so now behind each of the of these boxes we are going to put in some codes we have here a few codes to perform some functionalities that we want relative to that box here I'll put most of the boxes as combo boxes which are much like text boxes but with some options to, to view a list one by one here with a drop down button once you start putting in one letter it autofills the rest based on the data available in the field so here we are going to view the pages I've been putting we have here the form where we are going to put the passengers and here, the, if you are very attentive, you will find that there are some fields which are hidden actually. And we can just unhide them here to show that they are actually in surname and name. So here, I'll, I'm having a buffer sheet system here. You will find here it is A, B, C up to M, but here it is up to U. I've put in the system some way to automatically fill in the, the form based on the data a kind of intelligent system where as we are inputting the locality the system when you first start the system the system is fresh there is no locality there and you will find that behind all these things there is no formula it is put through coding we are going to go through this coding later and here what the functionality have added is that when you double click on the on a locality it's going to add the locality here it's going to add the name here and each time we type in a street name we are going to add the street name here so the more we use the system the more we are going to fill our database here so each time we add a locality the locality will, will fill up here more and more and more for each locality we are going to put in the name that we double click on the form here and we are going to add this so if we can have a peep at the code here so that when we double click the address field this is the address text address we are putting in the range locality and the new localities that we are going to fetch from here and we are going to add this string here which is my string which is the text address that value that value is just the value or the text string that we put in here so like that we are going to fill in this form which I've called the locality and we are going to use what we what is known as dynamic range I'll put a shortcut key here you can you know how to define the shortcut keys you go to more commands that you want to add here it is the name manager and we just add it here in between depending where you want if you want it to be visible just in your form you just add it in this form here uh, and here we use the name manager and we are going to define a set of names which will help us select data here you, you see that each time we enter a new locality uh, we define a locality programmatically that is going to add up here that you find here the locality six we've reached here if we add the last the next locality is going to be locality seven we never define the ranges as static because the more we enter data the more the, the range is going to, to grow up and if you find here it, the range stop just by the last one we've entered here. The list is where we are going to keep different data that we need in our pull down, drop down command box. Here we have the officers here, and countries, and the surveillance here, and we have all the nationalities. These are automatically generated based upon the 
the locality that we enter. Once we double click on the locality, the name is added here and the locality name is added here, as well as the office in which it is here. It is going to get saved in that sheet and this sheet is going to pull from this sheet up to the locality here in that sheet. And we have here the hotels in Mauritius have reached 903. This is growing every time. And we have here the, uh, the care of field. The double click for this the command CU double click. And we are going to search first if this text is actually present in this sheet so that we don't put in some duplicate names. If there is nothing, so if it's not in the list, we are just simply just saving that in that sheet. And uh, column A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We are going to save these fields here. The person name, the address, uh, the office, phone number, the street, the locality, as we can find here. And if the person is already in the database, if else that we are going just to write already in database. So this is the care of fields. And we have here fields for the flights in Mauritius here. And then we have a lot of returns. This is the part for the input and this is the output part. Uh, we are going to create some pivot table for programming here uh, I've put that in some modules here for pivot we are going to create a pivot through coding so that once we we are in this field we'll generate a set of, of returns based on pivot data for example here uh, you'll find that there's no code behind it we have a breakdown by all flights here based upon the flights here by the persons traveling. We are going to have how many person have of each of these fields here. You can find that here, that we find in this form here. Um, and if we just put the field stats, I have one uh, field generated here for the, all the uh, passengers and it's, and by the way, you can ha just make a walkthrough through the f those fields here so that uh, here are some basic functionalities want to clear the fields and here if we double click we have that person and we can also for example bring some modification uh, based upon the person name correction to that and you find that it's the last field here with the correction. The most important thing once we get all our data in our sheet is to get the returns out of them. And here we are doing compilation for the different returns required. We are here at the return for Chikungunya and Deng. Um, we need a breakdown by each health office and we have it like that using a pivot table. This uh, pivot table actually has been generated for coding, and we will have a look at it here. So here it is. We are actually creating a pivot table using the PT cache, the PT range, the range of cell that we want. And you see that here we are using the full. Full is, is actually the name range. Full which actually represents the full list of data. So we don't have to call the range here, we just use that uh, name here. And we generate, we create a name for that, and we generate a pivot table, and we put in the array, health office and the countries of arrival, which is here, health office and the countries of arrival, which is PT, add field, row field, the array, which can take more fields there, depending how many sub fields we want to create here and we just put here in our 
value fields that we want that to be that field of chikungunya deng the syntax must be exactly the same as that in the table here for it has to be exactly this one here otherwise you won't be able to pull up this here and with that we are going to say that we need the function excel count so we are going just to count the occurrence of this one table here full of data we could realize here we have actually two countries arriving from so we need to also compile one return for transiting and one return for arriving and so we are going to repeat the same procedures from here up to here we are going to repeat that here so the same thing here and here we are going to we have to do seven value here so that we are going the same thing but this time it is for the transiting countries and you will find here the, 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 the only difference is transiting here and here it's for the arrival and we are going to just put the table here 